Hey, you guys, and welcome to my channel. Now, you know, we talk about narcissists um, a lot of times very generally on this channel. And I'll be the first to say that a narcissist can be male or female, young or old, rich or poor, you know, hold all types of positions in society. So demographically, you know, there's not any set standard or mold. Anybody can be a narcissist, okay? Okay. But with that being said, I also want to acknowledge that, you know, you often hear me talk about on my video, a spectrum, you know, or basically a ruler, if you will, where a narcissist will fall on this line somewhere from the lowest end to the highest end of that scale. Okay. So in today's video, we're going to talk about those lower level narcissistic men. You know, these are the easiest one to talk about because they're the most obvious as far as I'm concerned. You know, when we have our eyes and our ears open. Now, all, you know, narcissists are low vibrational, you know, but when we're looking on the spectrum, we can start to see general traits that the lower range narcissists or, you know, a lower level narcissist seem to have that much more obvious displays of, okay? So typically, you know, there's an obvious trail of messing up. Like this dude is, when you hear the background story of his life, it's just story after story after story of the ball being dropped, of things falling through, um, of not following through, of not finishing what he started, you know, of huge instability or being an unstable person. And, you know, he may even have uh, criminal records as well. Because there's always some scheme or some scam. And that is because, you know, that grandiose aspect is definitely still there for his ego, you know. And that grandiose aspect, which leads to his mask, uh, makes him, you know, want to still be entitled to be treated like a king. You know, this isn't through any merit of something that he's earned or even in his bloodline, okay? But just to be given, you know, and that is the most interesting thing, right? This person who has done nothing to even deserve basic, okay, reciprocation wants to be treated like a king. And that's why I titled this video Controlling Broke dudes with rich taste, because that kind of sums up the lower level narcissistic men. You know, they're looking to be rescued. To me, you know, it's a huge tap into their feminine energy. Like, oh my gosh, why do they even need that thing between their legs? For real. For real, they need to just had the sex change, you know, but yeah, um, they want to seek out women who are very strong career wise, typically speaking, typically speaking, they want to, uh, seek out that woman, but that she could be broken relationally wise, you know, meaning you can be book smart and be street dumb. You know what I mean? Or be book smart and be your emotional maturity is very weak when it comes to your interpersonal or personal relationships. And we see this oftentimes when women who are just killing it in the boardroom and flunking it in their relationships. Okay. Um, there's a certain type of intelligence that that is not transferring over because they're apples and oranges, you know, uh, being book smart as far as, you know, uh, scholastic and all of that, you know, that it's very separate from emotional maturity. And that's why I say in so many videos that, you know, this is just, is not taught in the schools, of course, 
But, you know, if you're fortunate and you have parents who, you know, bestow this wisdom and if you actually listen, you know, because most teenagers and young adults are very hard headed and they think they know what's best for their life in a certain sense. And perhaps ultimately, yes, they're going to make that decision. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with taking wise counsel from people who have been there and done that and from learning, you know, because nobody knows it all. Right. But yeah, we see this often time in these women and they're so brilliant in their work, but yet these lower range lower uh range and lower level narcissists are able to come into their life with you know what I would call a penny mentality, meaning they're so simple minded. They're so simple minded and they can't even touch her, meaning they can't touch her as far as is no way that they can go and and have a career as what she has, like the grades that she got, the the status that she's acquired in that way. But they're able to use these basic, very basic manipulation tactics to, you know, penetrate the infrastructure or, you know, get into the nucleus of her life and use her for their own selfish alternatives and motives you know there's a lot of things that are going on behind the scenes of course when we peel back these onions as to why this guy is typically able to do this to her now um of course in the nucleus when we go down to the root and the core here chances are we're going to find a woman with low self-esteem you know she may be codependent in nature you know, a toxic empath who, you know, has this rescue syndrome in her where she likes to rescue things. She likes to take control of things. And, you know, this is someone that's in tune or a female or feminine energy that's more in tune with her masculine energy. So we're, we're starting to see where these two energies are compatible, where we have a male that's more in tune with its feminine energy. And then we have a woman that's more in tune with her masculine en- masculine energy. You know, because that's what she's using um, as she's aggressively pursuing her goals. You know, she's using that testosterone. She's using that masculine energy. All right. Then if she has daddy issues or she didn't have the proper... Um, example of male energy, particularly particularly from her uh, primary caretaker, you know, now we have unresolved issues that are replaying itself in adult relationships, you know. And then a lot of times, um, because that masculine energy wasn't there, the feminine energy had to learn to fend for herself. So getting those good grades and stuff, it could have been a a distraction from the toxicity at at home or, you know, at least having some stroke of ego or some embrace or some area of the life where things were going right. Or just even out of necessity, like if if I don't do this, if I don't excel here, um... How am I going to support myself without the masculine energy? You know, and then we learn not to rely on that masculine energy. And then we're tapping into our masculine energy to play the role of the masculine energy that's not present, you know, and this isn't going to resonate with everybody, but sometimes that's the case. And then another case is, like I said, it's just the fundamental breakage, you know, where they're the core or primary caretakers weren't there and it planted a lot of negative seeds that are playing out in relationships down the line. And then she's going to be perpetually attracted to a man that resembles the father or the the masculine energy that let her down, you know, but that attraction is really just providing opportunities to, uh, resolve or reconcile the situation, but it what ends up happening until there's a rock bottom, 
or until the universe is ends up screaming at you is you keep perpetuating that situation and it's like perpetuating on so many levels like yeah you're reliving it you're reattracting it but then it's embedding it deeper in the subconscious and now it's like all men are are, are trash which isn't the case it's not the case but you know a lot of things have to be renewed um as far as being rewritten as well like um the perceptions and mentality and how she's going about setting these relationships okay that's making her vulnerable to keep attracting these lower level narcissistic men um you know it's definitely the reciprocation factor oh my gosh these lower lar- level narcissistic men you know they are the kings of bread crumbing cuz they're <laughs> that's all they got to give anyway out of all the narcissists on the, the spectrum cuz we have the lower level and we'll say we have the mid level narcissists and then we have the high range okay but these lower level narcissists all they got to give is barely a bread crumb okay but when you're so starved for intimacy or what you perceive to be intimacy those breadcrumbs feel like a loaf of bread at first when we are looking or that woman is looking through her brokenness and her toxicity and that is the trick or you know this narcissist and like all narcissists you know they're magicians and they want to create illusions and you know they might start off strong or you know this woman and since she does have the financial means, perhaps a lot of times, um, they're not, that's not top on their list for the masculine energy that they're pursuing, you know? So I definitely would ask, uh, you know, or suggest that, you know, that has to change moving forward, of course. All right, but either way, so then she's more impressed with time spent. And of course, the lower level narcissists who may be unemployed, underemployed, you know what I mean? Not really holding steady jobs and whatnot. He has the time to spend with her in between, you know, he's there when she's off from work. You know, maybe in the beginning, he's taking her out, you know, not even anywhere expensive, but she's just appreciating the effort, you know? So being impressed by little. And then if he seemingly makes large efforts, oh my God, he can cook. And then, you know, these guys usually have mastered sex on a high level as well. So that, you know, is a big issue that comes into play with the soul ties, you know? So that, bonding that occurs when joining with that narcissist physically um could also add a lot of elements of confusion but they know that they know it they have to give what they got to give like you know if if she's coming to the table with all of this and this is all he has to come to the table with he's going to make it do his best to uh you know please her in the bedroom You know, and then sometimes that suffices at least for a certain amount of time in a relationship or this part of the aspect is something that she doesn't forget about for a long time to come until she starts having the healthy perception of what's going on here and how she's selling herself short. But these lower level narcissists, there's... If I'm putting them in the lowest range, they have the lowest amount of character. You know, they just don't have any shame. You know, they'll come into this woman home, um, drive her car while she's at work, right? (laughs) Sleep with other women in the bed, that in her bedroom, okay? That he may be even homeless, you know? And what I call homeless, oh, he's staying with a relative when you meet him or he's you know, living with his brother, you know, that's a relative, but yeah, doesn't have his own. He doesn't have his own. So he wants to get with another woman who does have 
her own and make it his own, okay? So he's moving in on your territory of everything that you worked hard for and he's taking ownership of it. Now he sees it's his because you're his. Everything that belongs to you becomes his now, right? Only he hasn't contributed or earned any of it. And that's why I call this, and yet again, the title, Controlling Broke Dudes with Rich Taste. Like, you have a nerve to have rich taste, as tacky as they are, as ignorant as they are. And, you know, these men are lesser aware of themselves than the mid-range narcissist in a high and because they have a lesser awareness, it actually is to your advantage of being able to scope them out sooner and to be able to tell who they are because their ignorance, you know, it's harder for them to hide it. Their ignorance is that much more greater, you know, and, and it, like I said, that takes that ability to have a certain amount of self-awareness. So it's... They can't even control it, you know. So once you're increasing your emotional maturity, that puts you in a power position to be able to weed these type of guys out, these lower range ones. They should be pretty easy for you to weed out. <laughs> these ones are pretty easy because, you know, they're going to come and do a song and dance for you, right? But what you're going to see when you start finding out about their life, and which will be very early on, that they've been nothing but a screw up. Nothing but a screw up. Like it's very obvious with this person's history, just in the way that they've led their lives. But here's the thing: they bump into a toxic empath that wants to see the best in everyone. Well, you know, and that, you know, with my love, the empath is thinking, with my love and direction, he can turn this around. Maybe I've met him and I'll be the catalyst for him and his life. And, you know, just taking it on, taking on a fixer upper. Come on, taking that on. But it's not for you to be a build a bob. It's not for you to be building a man, young lady and women out here. Okay, if you can get up off of your behind and get where you are in life, a man can do it too. He should be doing it first. Okay, so he should be relieving things in your life, not coming into your life for you to be cleaning up and organizing and, and fixing up and becoming his fixer. You have an that's not in your feminine energy, number one. It's not for you to provide and protect. That's very masculine, number one. So as feminine as you can look, you might be like, well, I am not masculine. I wear dresses. I embrace my curves. I wear makeup. I get my nails done. I am a very feminine. That is a very shallow definition of femininity. So you might have to check yourself on that and see why you keep ending up with these lower level narcissistic men. And you're so beautiful. I see these women. They're so beautiful. But the problem is they don't know their worth. And I say this from time to time. And I need to be saying this more because this needs to be drilled in. Narcissists exploit people who don't know their worth. Because you would already know he don't even deserve to sit at my table. Like, let alone, you don't deserve a conversation from me. You don't deserve to be getting my phone number, the digits. Like... This dude, the access that they end up getting on these beautiful, intelligent, otherwise women, book smart women, you know, and then by the time you come to your senses, it's it's like they have got their nails into you. And this is what people say for women. But I got to say it for them because, like I said, they're in their feminine energy. Trust me, they're going to be going zero to a hundred with you because they don't want you to figure it out before they got their nails in you. Just just like a toxic woman setting up her meal ticket to secure the bag. Okay, it's the same thing. They will be talking about getting you pregnant right away. They will be talking about that. And you might think it's cute in your lack of emotional maturity. 
oh my God, he wants me to have his baby. Yeah, because he wants to be connected to you, sweetie. He knows that you are secure. You are stable. So why? He knows enough in his emotional maturity to say, you know what? Um, I'm unstable in life. He, he can recognize that about himself. I need someone that's going to be stable consistently. So he meets you. He tells you about his consistent inconsistencies in life. And then you tell him about your consistent consistencies in life. And it's like, bingo. Okay, I need to keep that. I need to keep that in my life. And maybe, you know, because they're not really for marriage. They will, if you really have a lot of wealth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They'll marry you. They won't be faithful, of course. But a baby is the next quickest way that he could do this with you. And it's like, even if she breaks up with me, I have access to her. I have access and I could utilize that access, you know, even when I'm not with her. Like it just, and you might find that he's done that with other women. But if you are in denial, if you are desperate for the connection with someone, and then here comes this lower range narc, you're going to be making excuses. You're going to minimize his past behaviors. And, you know, you'll be setting yourself up for a huge, huge, devastating moment when the mask drops, when it becomes clear to you that this person is setting you up because that's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. He's setting you up to be his mule, you know. He's making crumbs of investments that you're feeling like is a loaf of bread. And then, you know, once you realize you got a crumb and you're the one <laughs> that's getting, giving the loaves of breads, you know, and that's how it's very insulting once you come to that realization, like, wow. And then, yeah, you will feel like you were taken advantage of. You've obviously given far more than you will ever receive from this person. And then you find out they never even cared about you. It was just, like I said, a controlling boat dude with rich taste that wants to be treated like a king, wants all the respect in the world, and yet haven't earned even one penny of it. Haven't earned it. And, you know, as he's sucking your energy because they are all energy vampires, you're going to be the drained one. But yet he's going to expect you to keep it up, to do this with a smile on your face, to to feel like this is normal. And if you have put yourself in these positions time and time again, it may be your normal. But that's the problem. You're not even used to feeling how you should be treated in a healthy situation. So you're used to coming in and rescuing men and taking care of men and being a sugar mama and being exploited for not knowing your worth because this is what these men are going to do and they have no shame in their game and they feel like it's fair and even and like, oh, well, you know, hey, I look, I'm giving her my time. I'm giving her my sex. I deserve everything else that I get for this. You know, in their mind, this is the lies that they're telling themselves. This is, you know, fair to them. It's fair to them. That's why they're not sorry, you know. They don't have empathy, yeah, but they're not sorry to them. That's the exchange. It's transactional. Look, uh, look, I'm when you're with me, I make you feel good, right? At least during the love bomb phase. So to them, whatever the love bomb phase is, however often it comes around, even when they're devaluing and discarding you, look, that is worth whatever they're getting. They feel like that's your exchange. Hey, so now, you know, your standards and boundaries are what are going to have to be, uh, you know, considered here. <laughs> and like I said, at the root here is them exploiting you for not knowing your worth, ladies. OK, so, you know, we have to do better. We have to do better and stop settling. You know, know and believe that you can have better because we take these situations sometimes out of desperation. It's like, you know what? 
you don't believe you can have better. You feel like you have to settle for this or that. And, you know, especially for a lot of black women out there who feel like the pickings are slim with other black men. And I had to just say that particular group and is not to exclude any other women out there who feel like, well, Lakia, you know, as Caucasian women, we don't have it easier. You know what I mean? And such and such. But statistics show that you do, actually. So I'm going to just intercept you there. Because maybe you perceive that your experiences have been different, but that's because of your toxicity. Okay? But, yeah. It's it's a lot. It's, it's, it's a lot going on out here in the black community in particular. But if we open, you know, our... Um, our con- you know, the kind of guy that we're attracted to is talking about just on demographic sense, you know, expand to be able to be interracially dating and stuff like that. You know, you're going to give yourself more exposure and more opportunities. OK, so, you know, a lot of things have to be um, considered here and giving yourself the best chances to getting your needs met. All right. So, you know, I think this is good for part one. But just take heed, guys. Take heed. Because, you know, this it lays true, especially for these lower level narcissists, that, you know, past behaviors can you know, basically be that future indication. All right? That future indication of what he's going to do to you next. And especially if he's recently, because these guys are, you know, just like the, they're the most relational junkies out of all of the ranges. OK. And, you know, they're rebounding. Boom, 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 boom. So you're looking back. You know, they just broke up with somebody yesterday and they was doing this and that. Well, <laughs> they're going to do it to you, too. Maybe not on day one. But yeah, by day three. Yeah. OK. And, and they're just hiding it from you. And chances are they're doing it by day one, okay? And we just don't know about it yet. All right. So, you know, let's let's up our standards, ladies. And we meet a guy who has proven he's been inconsistent, unreliable, unreciprocal, unstable. We have to see that, okay? We have to see that. Why even give that a chance? Why? When you can find someone who has proven themselves to be consistent. And you might say, oh, Lakia, nobody's perfect. And that's that empath in you. You have to check that. And it's true. Nobody is perfect. But it still doesn't mean he doesn't have a pattern of being an F up. Okay? A pattern of it. You should be looking for a man that has a pattern of the opposite. Stop taking on, you know, these fixer-uppers here. They drain you. You fixing them up for the next woman. All right? And it's a poor investment. I've made a video on the poor investment of a narcissist. We deserve so much more. But you can't get it if you don't increase your standards and your your boundaries with these men. Period. These are just men in general. But you're going to keep attracting this energy if you don't know your self-worth. If you don't start loving yourself, you don't start moving and doing things that are in your best interest. All right. So I'm going to just let this be a part one. We're going to talk more about these lower level narcissists and the women that fall for them, you know, because it's just it's effed up really at the end of the day, because you're left picking up these pieces during the discards and you're picking up the pieces throughout the relationships. But the pieces just get bigger, you know, from the messes that they've created And of course, they're going to flee from the responsibility because, you know, that's what they've always done. They're going to continue to do that. Okay. You have to be very discriminating. If you are a person that have found yourself in in these types of situations, you got to be discriminatory. Everybody doesn't get a chance. You cannot be a free for all. You have to discriminate. No, you know, I, I ain't even going there. Mm-mm, I can already tell Mm-mm, just based off of knowing this. Mm-mm. It's OK. So what? Everybody's not worthy. That's just like saying anybody can be the president of the United States. They have standards. They have boundaries around that. And there is a process. OK, everybody cannot just get access to that. 
You have to have the da, 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 and that's just it. It's very black and white. You got to become discriminatory. Okay. Oh, it's really cute. Oh my gosh. You know, but he's so nice. And oh, no, no, stop making decisions out of your emotions. And you have to get into your logic and balance that out. Balance it out. Because guess what? Love don't pay the bills. Okay. And you may say, I can pay my bills, but you know what? No woman should be taking care of a grown man. And there are other aspects to him. He's emotionally unavailable. But you have to be able to see that. Stop prematurely attaching. Because that's what it is. He wants you to fall in love like a teenage girl. Because that's what it is. You know, a lot of times these women that are book smart, they're emotionally stunted just like the narcissist in their own way. Okay? Just like a teenage girl, and it's like taking candy from a baby to them because your emotional your emotional maturity is of that of a baby, and they're taking advantage of it. And this woman can go on a chalkboard and solve the most complicated math equation, okay? But then some guy that may not have even finished high school comes and exploits her. In this area that she needs to get stronger in. All right. So if you've been that woman, I highly recommend that you consider getting some coaching with me. You know, you don't have to stay in this state. You know, if you never had a feminine energy, your mother wasn't there for you. You know, they don't teach it in school anyway. You can get this information and it can be tailored and suited to you. Okay. I offer this on my website. Uh, LakiaCrawford.com. Schedule your appointment. We'll get to the bottom of it and we can end this chapter forever. Forever. And you can get what you actually deserve. You can get that and stop this cycle with these lower level narcissistic men and dating beneath you and, you know, all of that horrible stuff that just, mm mm-mm. All right, so just be willing to make that investment in yourself. And they usually are, you know, those type of women, they usually are. You guys usually are. You just got to know what you should be investing in. That's the problem. We invest in the wrong things and we're wondering why we're not getting the results that we want. Okay, so we have to do something different to get a different result. Okay, and investing in these fixer up men, mm-mm, that is incredibly risky. If someone came up to you and said, hmm, and you're a venture capitalist, that's someone that invests in businesses, and there is a 99.99999 uh, factor that are basically chance that you will not get your money back. Are you going to make that investment? <laughs> Come on. No, you're not. But that's what we're doing when we invest in these lower level narcissistic men, you know, for that 0.000001% chance that, well, maybe there's this, we're just trying to see the hope out of our own toxicity because we want to be with someone instead of being patient and showing the universe, no, I can turn this down because I know I deserve better and I can wait for that. All right, so let's do better. You can do better. You can, but you have to believe that you can have better. And you have to get to the core there where you're not seeing your self-worth, where your self-esteem is low, and that needs to be addressed and dealt with. That needs to be addressed and dealt with, okay? All right, guys, so, you know, we're going to end this here. If this video resonates with you, if you've made it to the 34 minute and 25 second mark, thank you. (laughs) Hit that like button. Let me know down there who actually makes it to the end of my videos. Like who, who makes it to the end? I want to know. All right. 
But yeah, hit that like button and we're going to continue this discussion. All right. And like I said, you can um, set up your appointment with me, LakiaCrawford.com. The link is below in the description. It's below all the videos. All right. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Lots of content on here to help you. All right. But nothing is going to trump that one-on-one -on -one personal. All right. I do voice calls, Skype. FaceTimes, I do email coaching because writing is very therapeutic, all right? There's all types of packages you could take advantage of. I have um, all types of products on the website. You can see the therapeutic books I've written. They're available on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles. You can purchase the ebook or the hard copy. And um, you can see the No Narc merchandise that I have really cute, make your statement against narcissistic abuse and have fun, right? And then, um, mm, let me get this right here. I have the Patreon. You can find out about that on my website. It's a monthly contribution for the work that I do and you get some excellent perks for that. Pick a membership tiers and thank you for all of those who do support me through Patreon. Um, you can also always make donations to the channel. That's below in all the descriptions. And you know, a free way to just support this channel is to always hit that like button, guys, and leave comments, share the content. It pushes um, the information out in YouTube world, and that is priceless to me, all right? Because spreading awareness, first and foremost, is definitely going to be the most important thing, all right? With that being said, uh, what do I say at the end of all of my videos? Never, ever, ever give up on yourself. Continue to do the work. All right, we can do better when we know better. And until next time, please take care.